When people told themselves their past with stories, explained the present with stories, foretold the future with stories, the best place by the fire was kept for the storyteller. Hey, buddy. What brings you to my spot? Wouldn't you prefer staying out there with the party? Ah, uh, just want to get away from things? I can understand that. So how's about we introduce ourselves? My name's Jed. What am I doing here? Well, this is a place where most people come to when they want to hear a story. Do I have a story? Well, not exactly. I don't have a story. See, little buddy, people like me collect things. Some collect stamps, cards, mean vases, and stuff like that. Not me, though. I collect stories. Stories are something everyone can enjoy. And that's why I'm here right now, little buddy. So, if you want, pull up a chair and lend an ear. You know... Most folks seem to find it tricky to figure out where you start things story-wise, but not me. Nah, I'm a simple fella, and the simplest way to start a story is at the beginning. And I don't rightly know if there's anything better than the beginning laid down by our friends the Judeo-Christians right there in the book of Genesis. Also for the people wanting to argue over the philosophical validity, time and place. All I'm saying I got a shotgun in the back and a hanker to use on any smart Alex who wants to start turning the comment section into a flame war. Only warning. Okay, uh, now. Where was I? Uh, uh, kind of lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, yeah. The beginning. See, in the beginning, there was a whole lot of nothing. Then God created heaven and earth. Because he's God. He's kind of good at doing stuff like that. Now, right at the beginning, the earth was formless and empty, just a huge raging ocean and a whole lot of dark. Then God said, let there be light. And poof, there was light. And that made God mighty pleased. And then he separated the light and dark, calling the light day and the darkness night. And that right there, that was the first day. But while God could see things, there really wasn't anything to see. And being the sort of fellow who shakes things up, he went and said, let the water be in two separate places under a dome. And God made a dome, which we folks call sky. And that was it for day number two. After that, God figured that water in the sky was still kind of dull. So he rolled up his sleeves and made dry land. He called the dry parts earth and the wet parts sea. But that wasn't all. He looked at the land and showed his green thumb. Let the earth produce all kinds of plants like grains and fruits, he said. And the earth did. All kinds of plants sprung out and God was happy with that. Which was all for day three. Then God proved he's all for long-term planning. He looked up and said, Let lights appear in the sky to separate day from night and to show the time when days, years, and religious festivals begin. Or for some cowpokes to have something nice to look at after a long day's work. So, he made the sun for daylight, and the moon and stars for night. So, like anyone else, God was happy, and that was day four. Next day, God was thinking... What's the good of having pretty stuff if no one can admire it? So he said, Let the waters be filled with all sorts of swimming things, and let the air be filled with birds. And with that, he made whales and fish and everything else in the water. Then he made the birds to fly far and wide. And he was especially happy with them. He blessed all of them and told them to multiply. And that was day five. Day six, though. That's when he really got to work. 
God said, let there be crows for the earth too. And it was done. Horses and bears and coyotes and all sorts of things appear. And God was pleased with them and gave them the mission to multiply too. Well, that wasn't all he was going to do that day. No siree. God had bigger plans. He said, and now I'll make human beings and they'll be just like me. They'll have power over all living things. And so God made folks like us in his own image. And that was day number six. And so the whole universe was finished. On the seventh day, God finished his work and stopped. He blessed the seventh day and set it apart. Because by then, his creation was complete. And figured he'd just sit back and take it all in. And that's how the universe was made. After that, the people needed some place to live. So God put the first man, who we're calling Adam, in somewhere mighty special, the Garden of Eden, paradise on earth. And Adam's job was to guard it, cultivate it, and name all the animals that hung out there. Pretty cushy job, if you ask me. But look what I do. <laughs> God said Adam could eat from any tree he wanted. Except the one that gives knowledge of good and evil. Because if he did, he'd die. Which, well, that's a story for another time. But it's lonely being the first man on the planet. So God, being the friendly sort of fellow he is, decided to give him some companionship. But it's lonely being the first man on the planet. So God, being the friendly sore fella he is, decided to give him some companionship. He made him fall into a deep sleeve, and much like my cousin on Labor Day, swipe one of his ribs. With that, he formed the ideal companion for Adam. A woman. She was called Eve. And Adam was happy as could be. Because now he had... Ugh, and Anne was happy as could be about it, because now he could do to her what every man wanted to do with a prelay he liked. Play Mario Kart on multiplayer, because whipping CPUs non-stop gets tiresome. What? What did you think I was going to say? Get your minds out of the gutter, fellas. So Adam was happy about this, and said, Here's someone like me, my own kind, bone taken from my bone. And flesh from my flesh. Woman is her name because she was taken out a man. And that's why a man leaves his father and mother after getting hitched. The two become one. And that's why a man leaves his father and mother after getting hitched. The two become one. But as we all know, things don't stay good and happy forever in this story. Because there was one critter more crafty and sneaky than any of God's creations. A mean old serpent who stayed among the trees. Now this wasn't any ordinary serpent that startles you with a shaky tail or a too tight hug. No, back in those days, snakes had legs. So if you're scared of snakes now, count your blessings. They could be walking snakes too. But that's beside the point. This old serpent was actually the evil one, Lucifer himself. So he was bad. Bad as you can get. And he was fixing to do something real wicked. This scheme involved finding Eve while Anne was off doing something else. He crawled right up to her and said, Hey lady, I'm curious. Is it true that God said you can't eat from any tree in the garden? Nah, just from the one tree. God says that if we touch it, we'll die, Eve said. Being the innocent sort, she didn't know the idea of getting played. Ah, well you won't, that old serpent said. God just doesn't want you to eat it. Because he knows if you do, you'll be just like him. Y'all know good and evil. Go on, take a bite, see what happens. And his fib fooled Eve. She took a bite of that fruit, which was just so tasty looking, and she wanted to gain wisdom. She liked it a lot, 
because breaking rules always comes with a bit of a rush. And then went to find Adam. He took a job of it too, and now they knew things. They knew about good and evil, right and wrong, and their innocence fell away. More importantly, they realized they were bears the day they were born. In a panic, they made fig leaf covers and heard God moving through the garden. So they tried hiding from God. That goes about as well as you'd expect. Adam, where are you? Why are you hiding? Adam, like the kid who got caught with his hand in a cookie jar, came clean and answered, I heard you, but I hid because I was naked. The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then God said to Eve, Eve, what have you done? The serpent tricked me and I ate, Eve answered. Interestingly, neither of them owned up to breaking the rules. They just shifted the blame to someone else. But God looked at the serpent and cursed it making him lesser than any other beast, taking its legs and forcing it to crawl on its belly and eat dust. And there was now bad blood between him and the descendants of Eve for all days. Which explains a lot if you ask me. But Adam and Eve, they wouldn't be getting off easy. Childbearing became severe and painful for Eve, and Adam would have to till for his own food from here on in. And because they were no longer innocent, they were banished from the Garden of Eden, unable to live in that paradise, live with God, or take from the tree of life, or live forever. And they couldn't return neither. After he drove man out, God blocked the entrance with a flaming sword. But there's still hope for mankind. After all, this story is called Genesis. And Genesis... Is only the beginning. Now, wasn't that a story worth telling? Well, I've monopolized enough of your time, buddy. I'll be seeing you around. If you ever come by this spot again and listen to some more stories, don't you worry. I'll be right here. <laughs>